Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a story from one of our viewers who is from Ashland, Oregon. And there in the 1980s, he and some friends were staying at a cabin and had a crazy experience. That's next. All right, you guys, I am in a pretty thick forest in the northern Sierra Nevada here. I did find some massive pine cones. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Ponderosa pine. Check that out. Also, we have our beer, which is right behind me in the creek. And today's beer is Tahoe IPA. Check that out. <laughs> It's a India Pale Ale, so we'll be drinking that today. And that is an old beer. Not this particular one, but this is an old brewing company from the 1800s. It's a very old beer. I've seen their logo on the sides of old buildings like up near Virginia City in Nevada here. Pretty cool. <laughs> And that is a nice golden ale. There we go. Cheers. All right. Well, that's pretty tasty. Yeah, it's a little bitter. I don't like it when it's too bitter, but uh, there we go. So our story today comes to us from one of our viewers, his name is Jeff. And Jeff grew up in Ashland, Oregon. Population 21,000, really nice community. It's famous for a Shakespeare festival in the summer. It's in Southwest Oregon, essentially, just north of the California border. And that's where he grew up. He also told me that he rarely tells anybody about the experience that he had. In fact, his wife, it took him several years to tell her because when they were early in their relationship, he said, do you believe in Bigfoot? And she said no, and she laughed at him. And so he didn't even want to mention it and bring it up. Jeff was going to Southern Oregon State College in the mid-1980s with three other friends, Rich, Rod, and Steve, and he was majoring in forestry. And he said that was kind of ironic, I was majoring in forestry. All four of them thought it would be fun to go up to Jeff's parents' cabin and go snowmobiling. The cabin was in the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, 114,000 acres of forest and mountains, just beautiful country. They arrived at this cabin, it was an A-frame cabin near the lake, Hyatt Lake, was up on stilts, four feet up on stilts. In case the lake flooded in the spring and water came in, it would be safe up there. They arrived at this cabin, and it was winter, and there was about a foot of snow on the ground, fresh snow, and they were excited about that because they had something to go snowmobiling on. They unpacked their gear, figured out the fireplace, checked out the cabin, Jeff showed them around, and it was getting dark, and they thought, let's go snowmobiling in the forest at night. So they went out in the forest for about three hours snowmobiling, going through the trees and meadows, just having a good time. Everything was normal. Got back to the cabin, got the fire going, had some dinner, hanging out, having a good time, joking, talking about school and what's coming up in their lives. And they hung out till about midnight. Decided, let's go to bed, let's get up early and go snowmobiling, that would be great. Went to bed, Jeff slept downstairs in the hideaway and Rich, Rod and Steve slept upstairs in the A-frame cabin on the beds that were up there. Falling asleep, about an hour later, 
Jeff hears on the west side of the cabin this really loud pounding sound. Just pounding on the side of the cabin. And he sits up in bed, it's dark. He's like, what in the world is that? And it's frightening because he's not sure. He doesn't remember anything with the cabin having some crazy sound or the pipes making some sound or something. And he gets up and he continues to hear this pounding. In fact, it's so loud and so much vibration on the side of the cabin that the fishing rods that were mounted on the wall and the pegs fell off the pegs onto the ground. Flips on the light and he sees this and then some pictures came off the wall as well. The cabin was like shaking. He's like, oh my gosh. And he's in his underwear. He grabs a stool and he slides it up to the window to look out and see what's going on. And he's looking straight out and it's about 12 feet down to the ground because the cabin is four feet up on these stilts and then it's another eight feet to the bottom of the window. He looks out and right when he's looking out and he wanted to look down, the, the vibration from this loud pounding moved the stool that he was standing on and he fell off the stool and onto the, the wood floor. Jeff was getting up off the floor and his three friends came down the stairs I'm like, what is going on? He goes, whatever it is, it's outside here. I can't see it. Help me get this stool up here and I'll take a look. And he slid the stool up against the wall and they braced it for him so he could stand up on there. Steve took a flashlight, held it up to the window and he looked down and to his left. And there he saw what he estimated was an eight foot tall humanoid being or creature with its shoulder up against the structure like it was pushing into it. You just saw this for a few seconds. The light was still there and he saw it had broad shoulders totally covered in hair and at one moment it turned its head and tilted its small head back and he could see these deep set eyes in its teeth and it had this deep guttural growl, like howl. Scared the crap out of him. And he also saw this massive arm. And then it lifted up and started pounding again and right then the fear just overtook him and he jumped backwards and knocked in the rod and knocked him over. They're like, this is crazy. The whole cabin was shaking. Like whatever this thing was, was trying to knock it over. And it's on stilts. Jeff knew this thing had to be about eight feet tall because the cabin was about four feet up on the stilts. And then from the bottom of the cabin, it was about eight feet to the bottom of the window. And he saw this thing about four feet down. Crazy. They thought we got to deter this thing, stop this thing or something, see what the heck's going on. So being 20 year old men, 20 plus year old men, they found the guns and they, Rich got a 30-30, Jeff got a pistol, they put their jackets and boots on and they went out the front door to kind of confront this thing or at least see what the heck is going on. I don't know if I would have done that. They went around the side of the building and came around the corner on the west side. And this thing was gone. No more pounding, no thing standing there, it was gone. They didn't know where it was. Steve still had the flashlight and he shined it down below the kitchen window and over and he could see tracks all over there from whatever this thing was. And the tracks also moved away and headed into a forest. The set of tracks. And they looked down and they could see one of them and it was huge, 20 inches long. 20 inches long is about like that big and 10 inches wide at the widest point. 
barefoot human-like ginormous tracks in the snow. The stride was really long, longer than they could replicate by jumping, and they're all athletes. And they could see that the stride was just massive. They couldn't replicate it at all. So they decided to follow these tracks through the snow at night, going through the snow-covered trees with the 30-30 pistol and flashlight. The tracks headed down towards the lake, Hyatt Lake, through the trees, and they got to the shoreline of the lake and Jeff said, wait, stop. There's fresh snow on the lake. If we go out here, we could go through. Fresh snow creates insulation on a lake if it's not completely solid and frozen. And it also masks any holes, any cracks in the ice, any anything that is a problem if you were to walk out in the ice you could easily go through because you can't see what is going on so they all stopped and they Steve still had the big flashlight he shined it out in the lake and he could see the trail of these tracks go straight out across this lake Hyatt Lake at that point the lake was about three-quarters of a mile wide and they could see this maybe a hundred yards go off until they, they couldn't see it anymore. And Jeff said, yeah, we can't go out here. Jeff said his dad, who had worked for the Ashland Fire Department for years, always reminded him to never go out on the lake when there's fresh snow because of those reasons. And they all agreed, yeah, this is not a good idea, even though these tracks go out there and they were kind of determined to follow them. They could see that these tracks sunk almost to the ground, 11 and a half inches of the 12 inches of snow. And they were athletes, and their tracks went about four or five inches into the snow. Good sized young men. They decided they were gonna head back to the cabin and pick this up in the morning and see what they could figure out. Went back to the cabin, could not sleep sat up and talked about it. A couple of them rested for a while. Got up the next morning, went down to the lake, and it had snowed later that night. Actually, early that morning. Covered the tracks up. So they couldn't find him anymore, and all they had now was this story. Crazy story. There was another time Jeff was up at this cabin with his girlfriend at the time. And they were walking around the cabin and his girlfriend had this weird sense that she was being watched. And Jeff also felt it as well. Just this strange feeling that there was something just inside the woods, just inside the tree line watching them. And not long after that, some rocks came flying out of the trees. Very far away, but throwing very hard, very hard thrown rocks. And Jeff said he had pitched in the San Diego Padres farm system. He was part of the San Diego Padres organization and he used to be able to pitch and he could pitch 93 miles per hour. And he said these rocks were just flying really hard at us. And I, I don't know if they hit him or if they just hit the ground and he was just observing this. This is really interesting. Jeff told his mom recently about me and my channel and, and what I do. And I talk a lot about Bigfoot and Sasquatch. And he told her that he was talking to me about his experience at the cabin. And she said, I never told you this, but after you told us what happened, your dad laughed and didn't think much of it, but I listened intently to what you had to say, and I had experienced this weird vibe at the cabin from time to time, 
and the sense that something was watching me and I never really felt comfortable up there. And so she listened really intently to his story about the cabin and didn't dismiss it. She also said, I never told you this, Jeff, but after you told us that story, and then the next time we went up to the cabin, which was that spring, that was the next time anybody went up to the cabin, they had to open it for the spring because they were gonna have some family come out and visit and do some fishing and do some camping. And they came out to the cabin to get it all ready to go. They showed up at the cabin, and this is what his mom said, the front door was ripped off and thrown down onto the deck. Jeff never heard about this. Jeff never knew anything about this. His mom and dad went into the cabin and the cabin was ransacked. Something went through and tried to destroy the cabin. The shelves in the kitchen were torn off, thrown onto the floor, and all the containers of food and flour and everything that were on the shelves were now on the floor of the cabin. They went into the bedroom, the beds were overturned, tables were knocked over, chairs were thrown across the room. But interesting, there were no valuables taken. There was a gun case that had these collectible guns. It got knocked over, but there was a glass door on it. It could have easily been broken and the guns could have been removed and taken. There was also a gold watch that was left on a nightstand in one of the bedrooms and that nightstand was still sitting upright with the watch on it. So whatever went in there wasn't in there to steal anything. It was just to destroy the place and send a message or something. While they were trying to clean this up, Jeff's dad went in the kitchen and was starting to clean up and he could be heard from the kitchen, according to his mom, Jeff's mom, and he said, looks like the boys were right. She came walking in the kitchen. They both were looking down and they could see in the flower that was on the floor, a large footprint in their cabin in the flower. There was also another half a footprint on the floor in another part of the kitchen in the, some more flour. They never told Jeff this. In fact, Jeff's dad passed away when he was 87 years old. He never mentioned it to Jeff. And Jeff said, that's kind of who my dad was. He's one of those kind of guys. Didn't want to admit things when he was wrong about something. It was a little bit of vindication for Jeff to know that his dad finally had some proof that what he saw was actually real. And that is my story for today. <laughs> really pretty wild. Thank you, Jeff, from Ashland, Oregon, and now living in Oklahoma. And uh, we appreciate that. And I love these giant pine cones. Aren't they crazy? Look at that. <laughs> They're massive. This is what fishermen do. They take it and they go, look at this uh, nine inch perch that I caught. Look at how big. It's actually a six pound walleye now. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, I just had to say that. So if you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained, the things that go bump in the night, like and subscribe. You guys know how to do that. I always appreciate your comments and everything else. Thank you for following me. I got a lot gonna, gonna be doing this summer on my channel. Looking forward to that. So and uh, appreciate it. So we'll see you next time. As always, keep hiking.